Perfect. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your counselor, Igor Pratap Singh Thur, uh, also the chair of economic development, and I'm joined by my colleague, regional counselor, Rowena Santos, who's our uh, chair for community services. Welcome to this exciting announcement today. Thank you so much for being here today with us. So before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that we are gathering here today on the, ter uh, on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and before them, the traditional territory of the H H Haudenosaunee and huron Vendat. We also acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other global indigenous people that now call Brampton their home. We're honored to live, work on, and enjoy this land. We will be introducing Premier Doug Ford, Mayor Patrick Brown, Tony Staffieri, Chair of TMU Board and the CEO of Rogers Communications, Mohammed Lashmi, Toronto Metropolitan University President, MPP Williams, and Minister Jones in a moment, and would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all my fellow City of Brampton Council members who are here today, along with Dr. Frank Martino, William Ozer Health System President and CEO, City of Brampton CAO Marlon Caladine, Brampton Library CEO Todd Kyle, and all the community members that are here pres present with us today. Thank you all for being here with us, and I'll now pass it over to Councillor Santos. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm Regional Councillor Rowena Santos in Brampton Wards 1 and 5 and Chair of Community Development. Today is such a truly momentous occasion and historic moment for the City of Brampton and also the province of Ontario. And you know what, for the past few years, the City of Brampton, together with all of you and members of Council, we have been advocating so hard for post-secondary education opportunities and accessibility to our residents, but we've also been pushing, as you all know, very hard for our needs in terms of health care funding and support. And so today is a celebration of that success, of that advocacy, but also our partnership with the province of Ontario. And so we're going to get started with this announcement, and without Further ado, I would like to introduce to everyone uh, the president, Mohammed Lashemi of, of TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University, to get us started for today's exciting announcement. Good morning. I'm honored to stand alongside uh, Premier Ford, Mayor Brown, and their teams to share some exciting news with you all today. I would like to recognize our board chair, Tony Safiri, president and CEO of Rogers Communications, and also a good friend and a partner in this, Dr. Frank Martino, president and CEO of William Osler Health System. It is hard to believe that almost 10 months have passed since Premier Ford first announced that Brampton will be the home of Toronto Metropolitan University's new medical school. I'm very proud to report that through the efforts of our provincial partners and the city of Brampton, we have made significant progress in realizing this ambitious goal, one that represents historic achievement for Brampton, Peel region, and the province as a whole. When we set out to create this new medical school, we had the people of Brampton at the forefront of our minds. Brampton is one of Canada's most culturally diverse and rapidly growing cities, and we understand the unique needs of this community. That's why we are committed to building an educational program that is community-driven, intentionally inclusive, and trains doctors whose cultural awareness and humility are as cr crucial as their medical skills. We are also committed to incorporating innovative learning practices that will enable students to be better prepared to meet the needs of the community. Our new approach is intended to support the province in, in improving urban health and addressing the needs of underrepresented populations. The new medical school will strengthen the healthcare system in Brampton in many ways not least of which is the development of a network of integrated health centers that will both hire and train doctors and other 
uh, healthcare professionals to offer medical care directly to between 20,000 to 50,000 Brampton residents uh, who currently don't have access to healthcare. Today's announcement further cements our commitment to the city of Brampton and the lasting and meaningful impact it will have on this community. It is my pleasure to invite Mayor Patrick Brown to the podium to say a few words. Well, welcome to Brampton and thank you all for being here. I'm Patrick Brown, the mayor of the great city of Brampton. I want to begin by thanking President Lashmi for your continued leadership on behalf of Toronto Metropolitan University and for being a phenomenal friend and partner to the city of Brampton as well as Tony Estaferi for all the work you've done to get us here. Uh, we're grateful for that friendship as well. I look forward to working closely and productively with TMU for many years to come in the city of Brampton. Today is an occasion to celebrate. It's more than a great day for the city of, of Brampton. Three years ago, almost to the day, the city of Brampton declared a health care emergency. For far too long, Brampton hadn't received its fair share, and we were facing a health care crisis. It's why we asked for a fair deal for Brampton. Our fair deal campaign asked for an active partner in the Ontario government to bridge Brampton's health care gaps. And I have to say to um, the Premier, I know he spoke about the health care crisis and hallway medicine. Um, what's happened in the last few years um, has been a game changer for our community. The health care crisis was what I heard door to door in our community. Um, and I know the Premier spoke about his commitment to address that. But even you know, beyond our wildest imaginations, no one would have thought we'd be seeing in Brampton in such a short period of time, not only a commitment to a second hospital, but a medical school. Um, this is incredible. So people see me smiling is because of all the great news from the province of, on, of, of Ontario. So thank you, uh, Premier. A big hand to Premier Ford's government. And on that note, I guess I should say, we also look forward to welcoming the Premier back uh, when we have that official unveiling for the second hospital as well. Um, as I understand, there's more work uh, to be done, uh, but I stand very proud of the incredible partnership with, we have with the province of Ontario. We needed help. We desperately needed help, and help um, is coming because of the leadership of the provincial government. Bramptonians are so proud to be home to the first new medical school in over 100 years in the GTA. This is historic. This is an incredible day for the city of Brampton. And I want to share one story for someone who's not with us today, and that's the former uh, Premier uh, Bill Davis, someone that uh, we all adored in the city of Brampton. And I remember sitting down with Mohammed Lashmi for the first time and he told me, he said, Bill Davis kept on telling us, you have to be in Brampton. And so although he's not here, um, I think it's important to acknowledge uh, that he uh, helped encourage that conversation um, and his leadership and his vision is still being felt uh, today. So thank you um, to our former premier who meant so much to our city for nudging our friend, uh, Muhammad Lashmi. Um, in 2025, Brampton will welcome 80 undergraduate and 95 postgraduate doctors of tomorrow. The School of Medicine will make Brampton the home of a community-centric medical school focused on inclusivity, innovation, and primary care. Through the creation of the Brampton School of Medicine, we are strengthening our city's healthcare system. It's a system that fosters local talent, creates economic growth, and is considered the cultural makeup uh, and one that celebrates diversity. This announcement today and the second hospital helps address the health care crisis we had in our city. And it goes a long way to ensuring the next generation of health care practitioners can train locally right here in the city. Um, Premier, as I've stated many times before, you have been a great partner to the city of Brampton. We welcome every opportunity to work with your government and make positive strides forward for every Bramptonian. Thank you for the partnership. I look forward to many announcements um, like this. And before I conclude, I specifically want to thank um, Deputy Mayor Harkirat Singh and um, Councillor Santos, because I know 
um, this project was one that you've been working on for a number of years. Even when people said at the beginning, there was no way it's possible. There's no way uh, the province is going to create another medical school. And I just want to say how grateful we are for your dedication. Um, and once again, um, thank you to... And, and just once again, thank you to, to Premier Ford. The night before the provincial budget, when this was announced, he called me and literally um, I was ecstatic because I know what this means for our community. This today is a very special day for our community and we are very grateful. So now I'll turn this over to uh, the local uh, area MPP, uh, Minister Charmaine Williams. Hi, good morning everyone, and I am so excited for today. I'm actually giddy. I'm Charmaine Williams, the MPP for Brampton Centre and the Minister for Women's Social and Economic Opportunities for the province of Ontario. And I would like to begin by acknowledging my provincial colleagues. We have MPP Hardeep Grewal of Brampton East. You can wave. <laughs> uh, MPP Emerjot Sandu of Brampton West. MPP Graham McGregor of Brampton North. And the Honorable Pradmeet Sakaria, President of the Treasury Board and MPP for Brampton South. And the General, as our Premier likes to call her, Deputy uh, Premier Sylvia Jones. And of course, Premier Doug Ford. <laughs> You know, I am so proud and so excited to be here and be a part of this announcement, which moves us closer to realizing our dream of building the first medical school here in Ontario in over 20 years, over 100 years, right here in Brampton. And for those of you who may not know or may not be familiar with the history of how we got into this building today, this building that's been a part of our community since the 70s. It was actually Councillor Fortini and I who brought this location to the attention of Dr. Lashemi and the TMU team, and here we are today. You have, it's amazing, you know, you've been a part of this community since me, the 80s, Councillor Fortini's, what, the 70s, 60s, a longer, longer time than me, but when you know your community and know how important these spaces are and what it means for the future of our communities, we know that this would be the best location for the future of medical schools in Ontario. And as one of the biggest supporters of Branton TMU Medical School, I really could speak on this issue for hours. Um, and, but you know, time restraints. And I want to turn it over to the Premier, the, the, the man who has such vision for the future, who is here, who believes in the residents and making sure the residents and communities across Ontario are put forth first. The man who is here to get the job done. Our Premier, Doug Ford. Well, good morning, everyone. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to be back in the uh, city of Brampton. As, as I've told this story many times, when Carl and I first got married, we moved out here, uh, stayed here for five years, and then we went back to the great state of Etobicoke. But I love the people of <laughs> Brampton, so we have uh, a deep connection. And as you've heard, um, I, again, Minister Jones, thank you. Deputy Premier, always by my side. Uh, we have we have a lot of, I, I know I say everyone's a champion, but she really is. And, and Minister Williams, you know, I'm so happy to have you down at Queen's Park. And I have to give a, a special shout out to her because Minister Williams, she's been a champion for this project from day one and a big part of why we're here uh, today at this location. And our other local champions, uh, Minister Sarkari, MPP Sandu, MPP Gruel, and MPP McGregor. I like that. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> I always say they're all all-stars and do a fantastic uh, job working and representing uh, the people of Brampton down at Queen's Park and as well as Peel Region. And of course, it's always great 
to be here with my friend, uh, Mayor Patrick Brown. And, and Mayor, thank you for always hosting us. And we have 444 municipalities across the province, and we always want to work collaboratively, collaboratively and, and work in cooperation with the mayors. Uh, there's no easier mayor to work with than uh, Mayor Brown. And you can see what happens when you all work together things like this happen, the new hospital, getting the medical school, and so many other areas. I also want to thank uh, my good friend, Dr. Mohammed Lajmi. And thank you, uh, I always call him uh, Dr. Mohammed, but uh, Mohammed, thank you for being such a solid leader for TMU and for, again, leading the charge for this Brampton Medical School. And you might have heard me say, I love people that think outside the box. Uh, Mohammed, you're out of the box thinker. You're always thinking of different ways of uh, delivering services, and you have a, a great university. And uh, I just want to want to thank you. And my friends, over the past several years, if anything has taught us, when it comes to our health care, the health of all Ontarians, the status quo is no longer acceptable. We need to be bold, we need to be innovative, and we need to be creative. We need to look to other provinces and countries to see what they're doing differently and borrow the best ideas. We also need to be clear, Ontarians will always access health care with their OHIP card, never their credit card. Our goal is simple, whether it's an emergency in the middle of the night or a problem that's been bothering you for years, no matter where you live, we want to connect you to more convenient care closer to home. And together, we've come so far. Since 2018, over 60,000 new nurses and nearly 8,000 new doctors have registered to work right here in Ontario. In fact, last year was a record-breaking year for new nurses in Ontario, with over 12,000 new nurses registered and ready to work. And th these, th this is a really big number, and another 30,000 nurses studying at a college or university, providing the pipeline of talent and reinforcements. We've added over 3,500 hospital beds with another 3,000 more under construction as we speak right now. We're helping more than 30,000 more seniors find long-term care homes and upgrading another 30,000 long-term care home beds. But when it comes to your health, we must do more and we're doing more. Like I said, as we connect people to more convenient care, we need to be bold, innovative, and creative. And today, we're thrilled to be here with our great partners, the Toronto Metropolitan University and the City of Brampton, to announce the new location of the TMU School of Medicine, Ontario's the first new medical school in absolute decades and in the GTA. Thank you for pointing that out, Mayor, over 100 years. This is such a great location right here in the heart of Brampton, and congratulations to everyone involved. My friends, this new school is part of our government's major expansion of medical education in Ontario, the largest expansion of our medical school system in more than 10 years. In total, we're adding 160 undergraduate seats and 295 postgraduate positions at medical schools across the province, including 80 undergraduate seats and 95 postgraduate positions right here at the TMU School of Medicine in Brampton. Yeah, that's, that's really exciting. The, these seats, they represent Ontario's doctors of the future, the next generation of healthcare professionals who will provide care for us at the Brampton Civic Hospital, Peel Memorial, in our long-term care homes, or in community settings throughout our province. We want doctors from Ontario, trained in Ontario, serving the people of Ontario. In fact, we want doctors from Brampton, trained in Brampton, serving the people of Brampton. And this is just one part of our government's actions to expand our healthcare workforce for today and tomorrow. We're investing to upskill nurses to work in critical care. We're training up to 8,000 new personal support workers. We're making it easier for doctors and nurses educated abroad to have their credentials recognized here. 
And just last week, we announced plans to introduce new legislation that, if passed, will allow Canadian health care workers that are registered or licensed in another province or territory to practice in Ontario immediately without having to register again. My friends, we're bolstering our pipeline of healthcare talent so that all Ontarians in every corner of the province get the quality of care they need closer to home for generations to come. And as I said before, the status quo is not acceptable. A lot of people out there, they want to have endless debates about our healthcare system. But the people of Ontario, they just want action. We're being bold, we're being innovated, and we're working hand in hand with our colleges, universities, and healthcare partners. We're strengthening our healthcare workforce and making it easier for faster and more convenient for people to connect to care. Because it's all about you, it's all about our health, and thank you, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. I can ask all reporters to please identify yourselves by name and outlet, and please ask that the audience refrain from any and all applause during the question and answer portion of the press conference. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Premier. Rob Ferguson, Toronto Star. Good morning, Rob. How are um, you? I'm good, thank you. Um, just wanted to dig a little deeper on what you're looking for in a health care deal with the federal government. Um, you've said the you told us last Friday in London that the premiers are sticking together and we understand that, but you said they've also said that they will do bilateral deals. So um, what, in Ontario's point of view, what, what do you want in a bilateral deal with Ottawa? What do you want to, to dedicate that money to? Well, th thanks so much for that question, Rob, and I'm very happy uh, to hear that we're going up to Ottawa to meet with the Prime Minister on February 7th. Uh, we have a uh, cough meeting I believe it's this afternoon with all the premiers will be on the phone, uh, making sure that we, we just get a, a fair deal for all provinces and territories across this country. As I've always said, you know, we, we right now as it stands, uh, the Canadian health transfers, we only get 22%. And we're, we're you know, paying 78%. And even a large province like ourselves can't sustain uh, the health care spending without the support of the federal government. We've worked very collaboratively with the federal government on so many projects and you know I just look forward to uh, working with the Prime Minister and their team to come up with a program that again will be transparent, will always be accountable and make sure that we have funding in, in different areas no matter if it's uh, hiring new nurses or or doctors or working with us on the, on the backlog surgeries uh, just to name a few but it's going to be uh, it's going to be I, I believe we're going to get a deal. I, I'm very, very confident. It just needs two uh, groups, willing participants, to uh, to get that done. Um, I, I was looking for some specifics, though. Like, do do you want money for home care? Do you want more money for like where where would you like to take anything bilateral, and yeah. and what do you think needs the most help? Yeah, Rob, and I appreciate that. Absolutely, home care and other areas. But without getting into the weeds, uh, I wouldn't want to disrespect the other premiers who've really stuck together on this. We're all working together. Uh, yes, there's conversations going on, but uh, you know the the top tier areas: hiring more nurses, making sure we have enough for uh, home care, and, and rather than than having everyone in the hospitals because most people want to stay at home and get care there. We want to work on long-term care as well. So there's about four or five I've given you, but we'll, uh, we'll sit down with the Prime Minister and I'm very, very confident uh, the time we sit down, we'll all come together and make sure it's a fair deal for the province's territories and most importantly, the, the people of our province and Canada. Hi, Premier. Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, back to the meeting, Prime Minister Trudeau this week at the Cabinet retreat yeah. talked a lot about this, that, that he was adamant that it's not just about money, it's about better outcomes. He, he repeated sure. a few times, it's not just about yeah. money. Uh, you've obviously been pushing for an increase to 35%, but if the federal government offers a significant increase in billions of funding, but it's not up to the 35%, is there still a deal? 
I, you know something, I, with all due respect, I don't want to negotiate through the media, and I say that very respectfully because I know you have a job to do, uh, but we'll, we'll come up with the, the right amount that's going to work for all the provinces and territories. And again, we, we have a, a really good relationship with the federal government, so we'll, we'll work hard, and uh, there's always a little give and take uh, when you negotiate anything. And with respect, Premier, you, you have, though, been negotiating through the media. You've released lots of letters. You've wanted this very well known that you want this 35%. Um, and now you're talking about give and take. So so does that yeah. mean that you're willing to um, put some water in your wine here? If, if, if you're getting billions more, it, it might not reach what you want, but you think that that's enough? Yeah, that's a very, very good point. We've always mentioned, all Premiers have mentioned the 35%. But getting into the weeds, I'm saying um, we'll, we'll negotiate that with the federal government. And we'll negotiate hard. Uh, we're, we're all fighting for health care dollars across uh, the country, and but we're, we're all going to uh, come together, and we have a, a very close-knit group of premiers that have stuck together. And what I love about that, they're all from different political stripes. When the premiers get together, we, we don't look at political stripes. Uh, you know, we, we just look at one, one group of premiers uh, trying to make sure that we get a good deal off the federal government and I'm confident we're going to get that deal, put that behind us, and move forward to building a great health care system right here in Ontario. Hi, Premier. Lindsay Biscaya, CP24. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, this question is about the TTC. We've been yeah. seeing a, an increase in, of violence on the TTC over the last year, but particularly just in this last week, uh, it's almost daily incidents. What's your reaction to all of this? Well, it's really unfortunate. We live in such a beautiful city, and as a lot of you have known, I spent a lot of time in, in Chicago before I got into politics, and, you know, we're, we're so much better than a lot of these U.S. cities, and I don't want to be trending that way. And we, we need to hire, continue to hire police officers. Uh, I know I'm just doing some comparators here. In 2012, when Rob and I were down at the city, uh, compared to now, we have 500 less officers now than we did in 2012. And I'll tell you what the, the province is doing. Since 2018, uh, we, we've handed over to the city of Toronto $250 million for policing. And last year alone, over $27 million. Uh, this year, we're going to add nearly $42 million uh, to the policing budget. And I, I appreciate uh, Mer Meritori has come up with a a plan, but it's it, it's it's a band-aid solution. We need full-time police officers because right now the the 80 police officers they're having, which is which is great, uh, it's it's you know paid duty, so they're really working on time and a half and coming in. So we're really relying on the existing police officers to come in and uh, sign up for the the callbacks as they call them, and and just come in. So it's not it's not a full full team there. Uh, that's what we need. Mayor Tory has said too though that policing is, is, you know, having more police officers is one way to, you know, fix this, um, but also that it might be a band-aid solution. He keeps talking about mental health. Is there any potential for a collaboration maybe on mental health services and more funding towards that with the provincial government? Yeah, well, so the, when it comes to the mental health and with partnerships of the federal government, we're spending over 3.8 billion dollars. It's, it's staggering. We're the first government ever to have a minister dedicated mental health and addiction. And maybe I'll, you know, the Minister of Health is probably more familiar with this than myself. So if I could hand it over to the minister, that'd be great. Thank you. You know, as the Premier said, we, we are the first go uh, government in Ontario to have a full-time minister who is uh, literally rolling out our roadmap to wellness. $3.8 billion investment. Uh, as recently as uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we made another investment of a program that we have seen in a very short period of time working successfully. The One Stop talk actually allows immediate access for uh, our children and youth to have immediate uh, interventions with healthcare professionals. There is no doubt that all of us together need to work together on this. This is not a provincial only issue. It is municipal, federal, and, and uh, provincial. And we're working those partnerships and funding the programs that we see making a difference. Deeply disturbing to hear about youth um, that are 
so uh, disenfranchised that they feel their only pathway is to attack strangers in a publicly funded TTC. So that has to be dealt with in the short term, but we are also making the investments to make sure that mental health supports continue to be available right in our communities. Thank you. If I could, if I could just add, uh, there's kind of three tiers and we mentioned two of them. But the, the third one is so serious is uh, bill reform that the federal government controls over the, uh, you know, over their ministry. And, you know, we can't have police officers uh, in, in the GTA, uh, anywhere in Ontario, arrest really, really bad people and criminals uh, shooting up our streets and then they get out the next day on bail and then they go and commit the crime again. So all 13 premiers have signed a letter to review the bail reform and the justice system. It's absolutely critical. And again, it's a plea to the federal government. It's a plea to the justice system and the, the JPs and judges that are letting these people out. It's, it's absolutely staggering and mind boggling to me how you could have someone that commits a serious, heinous gun crime and they're back on the streets to commit it again. And we saw that happen. Uh, over the last little while, the tragedies of five police officers getting ambushed and assassinated. Until you sit down and you talk to police officers and you talk to their families uh, of these criminals doing that, uh, we, that's unacceptable. And we'll do everything we can to, to make those changes to bail reform. Hey, good morning, Premier Colin DeMello from Global News. Hi, I just wanted to return to the Federal Health Care Summit. Who takes the leadership position here amongst all of the Premiers? Is it yourself? So as an example, if some Premiers are, you know, a little unwilling to get on board, uh, who would rise to that occasion to really push the other Premiers to accept a deal? Is that a, a role that you're taking yourself? Well, again, we, we all work together. We have a great relationship, and, and thank you for that, Colin. Uh, Chair Stephenson, uh, the, the Premier of Manitoba is the chair. We rotate chairs every single year. She's doing an incredible job. I spoke to her yesterday on the phone, uh, the strategy as we're moving forward. And we're going to follow up on that conversation this afternoon with all the Premiers when we get on the conference call. Okay, perfect. I, I, I had a question for the Health Minister, if yes. you don't mind. Uh, Minister, it's coming around time for um, hospitals to make their budgets, and a lot of hospitals are dealing with, you know, everything that everyday Ontarians are dealing with, higher food costs, higher inflation costs, uh, higher electricity bills. Um, is, is the province committed to making sure that hospitals will have all the funding they need to cover all of those inflationary pressures that they're going to be under? So there's no doubt that as we go through our budgetary process, as you mentioned, Colin, a hospital, individual hospital corporations are doing that as well. You know, I have to say that we've been a very willing partner at the provincial level. When we see hospitals that have those innovative ideas, we've been able to fund them. You know, a $30 million investment uh, that was open and available to hospitals that if they could do additional surgeries to deal with some of the backlogs that we were dealing with, uh, that that uh, opportunity for funding at the provincial level was available to local hospitals and many of them. Uh, took us up on that offer. So we have, uh, through the course of, of our fiscal year, uh, made those investments and we will continue to be a partner because we understand that we need strong hospitals to have strong communities. Thank you. And uh, maybe I'll call up the President of the Treasury, the man that controls all the money in the province. You know, so we, you know, the, these are big numbers. When, since we've taken office, we've increased the health budget by 14 billion dollars i think uh, year after year the last couple of years this year we've increased it over five billion dollars and all the, the ceos uh, have said yes mon don't kid yourself money's important but it's not everything it's the process you know that we we have to think outside the box and the great uh, you know great announcements that the minister made last week it's going to change the health care uh, system here for the positive for decades to come, but uh, maybe I'm get Minister Sarkari to come up and just talk about the increase in, in budgets and uh, health care. Uh, thank you very much, Premier, and, and, and to your point exactly, uh, you know, last year, in our, as our public accounts showed, we made the largest uh, investment uh, 
uh, in the history of this province, over $5.2 billion increase in base spending for, for the healthcare sector. Uh, so we are making those critical investments, as Ms. Minister Jones uh, mentioned. Uh, that uh, translates into to more nurses. Today we're sitting here um, at a great announcement about uh, more doctors and healthcare professionals that will serve not only here in Brampton, across uh, the province. Uh, and we're also making those historic investments for the future with respect to uh, increasing capacity, over 3,000 uh, new uh, hospital beds that, and, and you know, one of the bigger projects right here in the city of Brampton that's uh, needed a, a new hospital uh, for so many years. Um, and so we are making those significant uh, investments. Uh, we have significantly increased the spending of health care, uh, and we have also added to that uh, many of the programs that uh, Minister Jones and the Premier have, have mentioned uh, as well. So we'll continue to make uh, those investments and make sure that we continue delivering some of the best health care uh, possible right here in the province of Ontario. I got to apologize, Colin. We're, we're usually we don't drag out these questions so long, but something passionate we all feel really strongly about, and this can't be done without the philanthropy of, of people like, uh, and I see my friend Teresa Ferracuti, the Lander Corporation that m made massive donations out in Scarborough and the university out there, and Scarborough General. And I just want to uh, want to thank you, Teresa, and many other people across the province that give back to hospitals. We could not do this work without the philanthropy of many, many families. And uh, there's no there's no one better than than yourself, Teresa, and your whole team, by the way. And we're very, very uh, grateful for that. Thank you so much. Hi, Premier. Allison Jones with the Canadian Press. Hi, Allison. Uh, How are you doing? Good, good, good. Yesterday, the federal environment minister said that he was looking at ways to potentially intervene in your Greenbelt development plans. Has he had any conversations with you? And what do you make of those comments? No, and I, I'm really disappointed when I hear that when we, we work collaboratively. This is our jurisdiction. Uh, we, we have 300,000 more people every year uh, coming to, to our province. And I know, you know, I know Patrick Brown, Mayor Patrick Brown, I should say, is doing an incredible job to make sure that he's going to meet his targets and, and build homes. And, and I, I just, you know, I just want to build homes because the next question, you're going to say, you know, where are we going to put these people? You can't complain about not having enough housing for years and then complain when we come up with a solution to do it. And we're going to continue building the 50,000 homes uh, on those those uh, pieces of property. But also, uh, they're, they're going to be build a hospital on there. We're going to be building a long-term care. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to build. And I'm very grateful for Mayor Brown's uh, collaboration, cooperation, and building homes. The um, Integrity Commissioner is looking into uh, the Greenbelt plans, the Auditor General as well. We know that the OPP is also poking around. Have the police have, uh, have they had any conversations with either you or your no. office yet about that? No, let me make it very clear. Uh, there's nothing going on there outside of building homes. I'm going to explain it very, very clearly. On the Greenbelt, there's existing property. So there, there's a community on one side of the road. The other side of the road, there's an empty field. All the servicing's being there. So naturally, you're gonna build on that open field. Simple as that. But I wanna remind the people, I, I find it so ironic. You know, we're in a housing crisis and Minister Clark has done an incredible job. We need to build homes, we're doing that. But I never hear anyone talk about the Liberals that changed the green belt 17 times, one seven, 17 times, not a peep, not a word, and there was no housing crisis back there. We're doing it for one reason. We want to build homes. We're going to build homes as fast as we possibly can. So I think there's a little bit of a, a double standard, you know, say, to say the least, but make no mistake about it, we're building homes on those pieces of property as sure as I'm standing here today. Hi, Premier. Lorenda Redekop with CBC News. Hi, Lorenda. Uh, connected to this announcement, um, creating more spaces in med medical schools is part of the issue, but we know we keep hearing over and over that 
fewer uh, recent graduates, they're going into medicine and there, there's this real lack of family doctors. What are you going to do to um, entice more medical school grads to become family doctors? Well, I'll tell you that it's, this is really not on me for, for many years and we're, we're gonna address this. We're gonna sit down with uh, great CEOs and like Mohammed, but we're gonna sit down with the other medical schools as, as well. Uh, what's very bothersome, and there isn't a person in Ontario that will disagree with this, the more people I talk to, and uh, some friends are saying, you know, my son or my daughter went to medical school, but they had to go to the Caribbean, or they had to go to Ireland. And foreign students that are coming in here learning and paying a fortune, by the way, and we'll, we'll compensate the universities for the difference, we can't have them coming here, learning, and then going back home. If they want to come here, lay down their roots, call Ontario home, I'm okay with it. But they're taking hundreds and hundreds of positions out of our students. And here in Ontario, that's just not right. It's not fair. And then when our Ontario students graduate down in the Caribbean and over in Ireland, they, they you know, they get treated like some foreign imposter when, when they come back home to work. It's wrong. We're going to make a difference. We're going to make a change. And uh, we'll, we'll get it done because it's just not right that uh, people are taking our students' spots and going back home. So we'll, we'll be sitting down with uh, all the universities, all the medical schools, and making sure they're compensated. Make no mistake about it. They'll be taken care of. But our kids are going to school here, not in the Caribbean, not in Ireland. Back to the mental health issue, Mayor Tory is calling for a national summit. He says that the province and the federal government are offloading responsibilities. Uh, what uh, more are you willing to do? Well, the first thing, you know, shouldn't be pointing fingers in my opinion. We work collaboratively together. There's no government in this country that has ever put more resource, resources, more financial resources when it comes to mental health and addiction than this government here. I have no problem sitting down and, and uh, you know, having that conversation, but the blame, the problems we're having on the TTC that I heard the other day on mental health might be, but you gotta stand up and take responsibility rather than constantly going like that. This will be the last question. Hi, Premier. This is Prabhnoor from Parvasi. Hi. Um, we know that Brampton is one of the most fast-growing cities in the country with a population of more than 700,000. Yet, it is saddening to see that the city does not have a university of its own. The last time that we talked about Brampton University, several controversies unfolded. When will Brampton get its fair share and why is it not being looked upon? Well, we've given Brampton quite a bit, and I'm never against uh, that at all. I have a phenomenal relationship with the mayor, and uh, I'll never say never, because there's always opportunities. As this community grows, they're going to have needs and requirements, and uh, I'd be more than happy to sit down with uh, Mayor Brown. and they want, Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to say, we've never seen the progress like we've seen in the last few years. Um, when I said before, you know, in our wildest imaginations that we'd be approved for a second hospital and a med school. Like, that, that's a dream come true. And sure, there's other things that a city would want, but you have to acknowledge progress when it's happening because for decades, we didn't have progress. For, you know, for decades, for 15 years a, at least, there was no progress on the second hospital. There was no progress on additional post-secondary education opportunities. And so um, today is a great day for the city of Brampton and there's not anything else you can say other than the fact uh, we're finally seeing progress and uh, I'm sure there'll be days in the future we can talk about other campaigns we have for the city of uh, Brampton uh, but we're finally going in the right direction and that's why we're all so elated here today in the city of Brampton. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much everyone. Well thanks so much it's again exciting to, to be here and uh, these are just one of many uh, trails that will blaze here together as a group and I'm really really excited to uh, come back and, and spend more time with the council and with the mayor to get things done right here in Brampton. So thank you everyone. Thank you. <laughs>